Stand by Comic Relief 2 in 10. Stand by 9. 8 seconds of eight, Robin Williams, seven, Billy Crystal, and six, Whoopi Goldberg. Five, stand by to roll four, A. Stand by the opening. Three, and and two, roll the opening. One, Take it. from Shea Stadium in New York. Tonight, the Mets take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mets Baseball 90 is brought to you by Bud Dry. Smooth taste, no aftertaste. By Manufacturers Hanover, where your money has power. By Nissan, building cars for people who want more than just a means of getting from here to there. Nissan, built for the human race. By Metropolitan Life and affiliated companies. Get Met, it pays. By GE, from Plastic to Financial Services, we bring good things to life. By Delta Airlines, we love to fly and it shows, with over 2,400 flights a day. And by Tropicana, 100% pure juices. Tropicana, even more reasons why you can't pick a better juice. Pitching for the Dodgers tonight, Mike Morgan with a record of four and one, an earned run average of 1.40. And on the mound for the Mets, the doctor, Dwight Gooden, with a record of one and three, an earn run average of 4.58. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tim McCarver, along with Ralph Kiner. It's comic relief night here at Shea Stadium. The first time that the Dodgers and the Mets have met this, this year. And I guess you could say, Ralph, that Tommy Lasorda, the manager of, of the Dodgers, and Davey Johnson, the manager of the Mets, hope that relief is not needed for their starting pitchers tonight, Mike Morgan and, and Doc Good. Well, Mike Morgan lost nine games before he was 20 years of age. He jumped right out of high school to the major leagues, and that's quite a feat. Uh, he was a good pitcher last year, as a matter of fact, for the Dodgers, but he didn't get any support. As a matter of fact, a little over two and a half runs a game. He's getting more support this year, and that's why he has a 4-1 and one record. And the doctor on the mound for the Mets, and he's off to his poor start ever. He's never been under 500 until this year. I guess he's glad to see the Dodgers in town because he's 9-1 in mm -hmm. one lifetime against them. Well, the Dodgers aren't having any fun this year. They're under 500, and they're trailing by a large margin. We'll see how both fare right after this from Bud Dry. We'll be right back. Comic Relief Night here at Shea Stadium. A full house is expecting a breezy, cool evening. The Mets going against the Dodgers for the first time this year. Doc Gooden against Mike Morgan. It should be a great matchup of two good right-handed pitchers. And there you see Billy Crystal next to the Mets dugout. And in the middle, of course, Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams to the right of Whoopi. And they will be throwing out the first ball. They will be performing tomorrow night at Radio City Music Hall here in New York City. It will be a benefit for the homeless, and it will be shown on HBO at 8 o'clock, we are told. And you see Tommy Lasorda right there with Rick Dempsey talking to the head scout of the Dodgers, the, the scout that goes before the ball club goes to town. That's Phil Regan right there. You remember the vulture, Ralph, some relief pitcher, speaking of comic relief <laughs> night. He was certainly a relief pitcher of great stature, and, of course, you got a little comic relief with... Tom Lasorda, although he's not too happy right now. I think Tommy Lasorda is going to be part of that show to, tomorrow night at Radio City, getting at 8 o'clock and featuring right. Billy Crystal and Robin Williams and Whoopi Goldberg, and they will be up, up here in the booth, we understand, in about the second inning, second or third inning. It's kind of unusual. Three throwing out the first ball. Billy to the left of your screen, of course. Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams. Robin holding the ball with the seams. I'm sure he knows that, right? <laughs> I like that. Three overthrows. They miss the cutoff, man. Or men. <laughs> Billy Crystal is a very good baseball fan. He's really into it. And 
What Robin Williams last year seen only his what second game? Second game, and he ended up catching a foul ball. As a matter of fact, he said only in America. Only in America. <laughs> he was Misha. We will hope to have a return of Misha, the Russian baseball player. <laughs> what brilliant comics they are, and we hope to have them up here shortly after the game starts. Billy, a big Yankee fan, we understand. There's Tommy Lasorda and Whoopi Goldberg. Speaking of the Yankees, it was announced in the paper today that uh, they had made a major trade, Dave Winfield going to the California Angels. That was in the first paragraph. In the second paragraph, Winfield said he didn't want to go to the California Angels. In the third paragraph of the story, the Angels said they never heard about it. Well, we understand that that has been completed. The deal has been consummated between the Yankees and the California Angels. Dave Winfield going to the Angels, the Halos on the West Coast, about 40 miles from Dodger Stadium, south of there, for a player to be named later. Certainly an offense that needs a boost, Doug Raider's California Angels. Doc Gooden hoping the Mets have a booster in their offense tonight. He is really off to a sluggish start. The numbers for Gooden, when he went 0-1 after losing opening day, it was the first time in his career that he has been below 500. So Doc Gooden trying to get on the winning track. And he'll be pitching to this lineup. Juan Samuel, the former Met, played for the Mets last year. Also the Phillies leading off. He'll be in center field. Batting second and playing second base, Willie Randolph. Batting third, the left fielder, Cal Daniels. Batting fourth and playing first base, Eddie Murray. Batting fifth, also a former angel, Yubi Brooks. Going to the Dodgers from Montreal, he'll be in right field. Batting sixth, the catcher, Mike Sosha. Batting seventh and playing third base, Lenny Harris. The eighth batter will be the shortstop, Alfredo Griffin. And Mike Morgan, the pitcher, batting ninth. Defensively, for the Mets, Kevin McReynolds in left field. Daryl Boston will be the center fielder this evening. Daryl Strawberry, two Daryls in the outfield tonight. Howard Johnson at third base. Kevin Elster at short. Greg Jeffries at second base, continuing to make improvement around the Keystone sack. Mike Marshall at first base after missing a couple of games. Mackie Sasser behind the plate and Doc Gooden on the mound. <laughs> they love Ralph Kiner. Oh, can't blame him for that. What is that? It says, uh, I think that's a fraternity at Rutgers. Fraternity at Rutgers. That's a big fan of yours, Ralph. How about that, Luke? Big thank you for that one. So here's Juan Samuel making his way to the plate, playing against the Mets after that trade to the Dodgers. They saw the Mets get Mike Marshall. Fred Wilpon always thinking of our guest. He has homemade cookies for our guest this evening. Whoopi Goldberg, Billy Crystal, and Robin Williams. We always get the store-bought kind, but they get home-baked, right? We can... <laughs> Juan Samuel leads it off for the Dodgers. Sammy batting only 2-12 after a quick start, and the fastball is tight, ball one. Samwell with 36 strikeouts and 105 at bats. Very alarming. Last year he struck out 120 times between the Mets and the Phillies. Popped up. Could be playable. Marshall near the Mets dugout. Photographer's booth and out of play. One and one to Samwell. As a matter of fact, Samwell, one of six active players to strike out 100 times in his last five seasons. And here is Marshalls. That wind drifts the ball into the stands out of reach. And there is a very strong wind blowing here at Shea Stadium tonight. Willie Mays comments to me about how Shea Stadium was the toughest center field to play in the National League. And that's said by a guy who's finished most of his career at Candlestick. 1-1, foul tip. A ball and two strikes to Samuel. Low, 
ball two, two and two. The Dodgers 14 and 15, the Mets 14 and 14. The Dodgers under 500 for the first time this year. One and five on their road trip. Check swing fouled away, still two and two. They've been done in by their bullpen here of late. And Gooden's career record, 9-1 and one with an earned run average of 1.38. He last lost to the Dodgers back in May 1985. May 25th, the curve is high, 3-2. and two. If you remember, that was the year that Gooden went 24-4. and four. And after he lost to the Dodgers, he went ahead and won 14 in a row. The Giants beat him three months later. Samuel down on strikes for the 37th time this year. One out here in the first, and that was ball four. This is the 40th game that the Dodgers are playing, so he's striking out at about one strikeout per game. Willie Randolph, the ex-Yankee captain, signed as a free agent with the Dodgers two years ago. Boy, will the Mets remember Willie Randolph's blow last year. That was a blow to their pennant hopes. Strike one. Three-run home run in the ninth inning to beat the Mets. And that was the start of their slide out of the pennant race. Curve is low, a ball and a strike. That was on August 20th. A three-run shot off Don Asi the other way, and now Don Asi, a teammate of his. That was his first home run in the National League. He had only two last year. Now Don is with the Dodgers. Incidentally, this is the Dodgers' 30th game. I didn't add that up right. Outfield for the Mets, shading Randolph toward right center. Swing and a miss. Ball and two strikes to Willie Randolph. I'll tell you, Doc's got some pop on that fastball tonight. Strike out to Samuel, a great fastball. Now that one right there also blew it right by Willie Randolph. Oh boy. And Randolph glaring out at Gooden. That ball was behind Randolph. It's two and two to Willie Randolph. That was close. Looks like Doc was late picking up the target. I don't think there's any animosity involved in that pitch, but you never know. Outside, three and two. The been, second three and two count. There have been some people saying that Doc is tipping off his pitches, and they hit him pretty hard when he throws that curveball every once in a while, so he might be, and that would wake you up right there. Line drive, base hit to center field. So. Randolph has the first Dodger hit. If indeed Gooden was throwing at Randolph, he picked the wrong team. The Dodgers were outscored 22 to 6 when they were swept in Montreal recently. Number 28. Well, it's off the trademark, as you could see when the contact was made. Bat in the ball, but a base hit for Randolph. So Willie at first base. And Cal Daniels, the ex-Cincinnati Red, who was traded to the Dodgers last year, didn't have a lot of at-bats, traded for Tim Leary along with Lenny Harris, who's starting tonight's game, takes ball one. When this guy is healthy, he is some player, Cal Daniels. Has a lifetime batting average at 302, 54 home runs in four years. One and one to Daniels. Cal from Vienna, Georgia, only 27 years old. Played in only 44 games last year. Randolph at first, one out, just underway. The first meeting of the year between the Dodgers and the Mets.
handoff used to be a threat to steal. He is a lot slower in recent years. There he goes. Fastball is outside corner, and this one thrown into center field. Boston charging in the throw to third is late, and yet another throwing error on the Mets catching staff. A ball and two strikes to Daniels. Looks like Jeffries might have gotten spiked in that play. He's limping around in the outfield area. He tried to get out of the way of Randolph and Sasser picking up his fourth error. And that is another stolen base as we look at it again. The Mets catchers have thrown out seven of 63 attempting to steal so far this year. It has been a glaring weakness. Oh, I'll say that is the ninth error in the this the 29th game on the Mets catchers. Orlando Mercado had one. Barry Lyons has four, and now Sasser with four. The curve gets Daniels. So temporarily, Gooden has overcome the throwing error by Sasser. Two outs. Number 33, Eddie Murray. When you think about it, the Mets catching staff was really a question mark without anybody knowing it going into this year because Carter was the number one catcher and they, the, both Lyons and Sasser really didn't have a chance to play that much for the, for the Mets to really appraise their abilities as Eddie Murray steps up. They were never really exposed enough right. to know exactly what they could do. Strike one to Eddie Murray, who has been a hot hitter. Five home runs, a 299 average. He went too far. So Murray in the hold, 0 and 2. Murray hit 247 for the Dodgers in his first year in the National League last year with 20 home runs and 88 runs batted in. He played in 160 games. His lifetime average is 291. Down on strikes goes Murray. That is the 48th time in his career that he has struck out three in an inning. No score, middle of the first. We're back after this from General Electric. Comic relief night. Even the vendors have the nose and glasses on. Given out to every fan who came to the game. Mike Morgan. Nothing funny as far as the Mets are concerned about his record this year. Four and one, a 1.40 ERA. He was eight and 11 last year. Mike Morgan. On the mound for the Dodgers. And he'll be pitching against Greg Jeffries as the leadoff batter for the Mets. Kevin Elster batting second at short. Howard Johnson batting third. Daryl Strawberry fourth. Kevin McReynolds fifth. Mike Marshall sixth. Dave Boston is seventh. And Mackie Sasser batting eighth. And the pitcher Doc Gooden batting ninth. Jeffries batting an even 300 on the year. Inside ball one. Jeffries with three home runs on the year, one a leadoff homer. Jammed, left center. Samuel gives way to Daniels. One out here in the first. I just had a visit from a fellow that uh, <laughs> broadcasts for the Dodgers. He came over here to say something about that pitch that Doc Gooden threw behind the head of Randall. Yeah, he said, uh, what's going on here? He said, they can't do that. It's against the rules if, he, if Doc was throwing at Willie Randolph intentionally. Of course, of course, Winder was a very understanding pitcher along those lines. Never, ever threw behind the batter. Drysdale never did that. No. Just slipped once it, in a while. Occasionally. He would never hit anybody as Kevin Elster takes a ball outside and low. Don Drysdale with 156 hit batsmen in his career. That's an all-time National League record. One and one to Elster. And he uh, was one of the best control pitchers in the game. That was a different era. Right, Ralph? Oh. That was when you as a hitter, if you were swinging the bat, well, you expected to go down. 
I think that's why a lot of guys get hit today because they don't expect anybody to pitch inside. Slider is outside. Elster has really hit better from that number two hole in front of Howard Johnson, as you see. Elster four for eight, hitting second with one home run. Slider just misses three and one. walks in. Oh, that is really unusual. He's walked only three batters coming into this game in 38 and two-thirds innings. That's his fourth walk of the year. We mentioned Morgan last year, 8 and 11. He had a 2.53 ERA, but he missed. He only had 153, make that 152 and two-thirds innings of work. He missed the ERA title by nine and a third innings. Hojo the batter. Howard second in home runs to Bobby Bonilla of the Pirates. Ball one. Howard only batting 258 this year as a left-handed batter, 290 right-handed. He's usually a better left-handed hitter than right-handed hitter. No score here in the first. So Sosha wants to talk to Morgan. Morgan lives in the wilderness. And he has a house that's sort of like a log cabin, log cabin style. Tulare, yeah. California, right? He was born there, yeah. One of 16 to make his debut on a major league level in professional ball. He's back this evening by Daniel Samuel Brooks, Lenny Harris at third, Alfredo Griffin, Randolph, Eddie Murray at first, Mike Soshin, Mike Morgan. Two balls, no strikes to Johnson. Elster at first with one out, scoreless game. Two and one. Morgan is playing for his 11th manager, and he's been in the major leagues 10 years. <laughs> His sixth ball club, as you see Buddy Harrelson flashing signs. Broke in with Oakland. Fourth player chosen in the nation the year he signed out of high school. Been around forever, it seems. He's still only 30 years old. There goes Elster, and this one lined foul. So Davey Johnson trying to get some animation on the bases. It's two and two. Elster retreating to first. Morgan lost his first nine decisions before the age of 20. Started out his major league career with a record of 0-9. The all-time record for consecutive losses from the start of a major league career, Terry Felton, who is 0 for 16 and still counting. He ever gets back in the major. Johnson coming. I should say Morgan coming to the Dodgers for Mike Devereaux last March. Kind of a strange trade. Devereaux, not only a good player, but playing well for the Orioles last year and this year. Morgan, an unknown commodity. Forty six and eighty lifetime. seems to be enjoying herself. <laughs> she on the other hand has her glasses 
and now that's cool today. So you put your glasses and your nose in your hair. <laughs> two and two to Johnson. Got it. The breaking ball gets Howard Johnson. So Hojo out of there, and that'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Right here, number 18, Daryl Strawberry. Darrell, five for his last 36. He has been struggling. No score here in the first inning. Two outs with Kevin Elster at first base. Inside corner. Strawberry had a home run against Morgan last year. When he started against the Mets, his first National League start, that was on May 15th. Career high in strikeouts in that game of nine. He had those nine in the first five and one-third innings. Mm. Tapper foul, 0-2 oh to Strawberry. Ben Hines, left of your screen, the batting instructor of the Dodgers, and to the right, Bill Russell. What a fine major league player he was. He's in charge of outfield deployment. He started his career as an outfielder, and they moved him into the infield. You know, a fine shortstop. 0-2 oh to Strawberry. Two outs, Elster at first. Way outside, ball one, one and two. Kevin McReynolds waits on deck. Cool evening here at Chase Stadium. Jam to Strawberry. He stays alive, a ball and two strikes to Darrell. Comic relief night here at Shea. You're watching Mets Baseball 90 on WWOR TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. Side, ball two, two and two to Strawberry. Most right handed pitchers and left handers, too, for that matter, try to get Strawberry out inside. Problem with that, if, if you miss over the plate, that's the danger zone. Two hundred nineteen career home runs already. Jammed, but Griffin catches the little humpback liner. So the Mets fail to score in the first, no score after one, and we'll fly into the second after this from Delta Airlines. Here with Shea with three of the most brilliant comedians in the history of Hollywood, Billy Crystal. Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams. Welcome. Hey, Tim. <laughs> what a night. You actually, Scooter Rizzuto, I think, should Holy be here tonight. Holy cow, like I tell you. They just traded Winfield for a player to be named. Who's that player? And let, why name him later? <laughs> That's right. We have that incredible clause that Mr. Steinbrenner found about the uh, 40 acres and a mule thing. Holy ah. cow. But enough of that. This is a golf course, Tim. And Teaneck. <laughs> and Cora, you oh, and Cora, Cora out and I, we right? play that course all the time. And, oh. 
Hubie Brooks fouls it back. No score here in the second. Hubie with six home runs. Let's put on some batting helmets. Don Drysdale's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 151 people hit. And in the old days, you didn't have my helmet. Sometimes, it's not a good time. How many times were you hit, Spunky? I was hit about five times in one inning. Did it, did it? Do you ever think there's it, any effect on you? No, no effect at all. What's your name? Did they take a, did they do a brain scan or anything? Uh-uh. <laughs> they didn't find anything? No, they just found a ball in my head. Oh, that's good. Okay. This goes on for days, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hubie, Hubie Brooks, the count two and two and one to Hubie. Does he hit Doc Gooden well? It's two and two to Hubie Brooks. He's seven, 17 for 37 lifetime. Wow. Since being traded. Yeah. That's good. How you doing, Ralph? I'm just hanging in here watching. That's okay, all. Okay, <laughs> just want to make sure you're still with He it. likes to watch. <laughs> the curve gets Brooks. That's the fourth strikeout for Doc Gooden. Who looks like his old self tonight. Well, he really does. He's throwing the ball well. That's his second strikeout on the curveball. He's a lovely Groucho Marx poster, children. You know, last year we had a visit from Misha, the Russian baseball player, right? He will be back one day. We also have a French umpire this year. Yes. What's his name? Well, André Fan. You know, no one is ever safe and everyone is out. <laughs> Existential umpires are very good to have in baseball. Umpires? Umpires. I see. Mike Sosha takes ball one, one and oh. No score here in the second. One out. You're coming to the show tomorrow night. I am indeed. Now we have Mr. Davey Johnson's going to help us and Tommy's going to help us. Lasorda. As Gooden throws a curve, strike two. Good call, Bill. Good call. <laughs> one on one. Sorry, is it one on one? I'm new in town. <laughs> hey, he's dyslexic. Here's Tommy. Look at him. Five strikes this game. Oh, he's got oven mitts on. He's oh. eating. I'm telling you, I know he's eating. <laughs> Curveball is outside. Two balls in the and frozen. Those spin. are oven mitts. Red skeleton oven mitts. We've got clowns on them. <laughs> He's getting the pizza out, right? Looking at the senior He's eating Winters. his thumb. What is he doing? <laughs> He's got on two killer whales. <laughs> <laughs> his soldier yeah. shot in the gap. That's going to be between them. It's going to be at least two and probably only two for it Mike Sosia. Mike runs like a 64 volt, so he's at second base. <laughs> Tell you, the fans here at Shea remember the home run that Sosia hit nine. off Gooden in game four of the playoff game when the Dodgers eventually beat the Mets in seven back in 1988. Went on to win the World Series. Against the Oakland Athletics. On a similar pitch, except this one was a little down. He hit a high inside fastball. That's Holy right. cow. <laughs> it's out of here. Not that one. Oh. <laughs> Don't age, pick it. Don't pick it. <laughs> An agent from William Morris, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lenny Harris now. Associate second and one out. Strike one. Ooh. Oh, two swings maybe. Oh, that's it. I'm no, I'm, oh, I can't stand oh, it. Oh, man. Now, Whoopi, yeah, my what, back hurts. Now, Whoopi, what? What, what impresses you most about Lenny Harris from here? Well, you know, he's got that, that S shape. The S shape. That I like. Look at it. Look at it. I now. see. I'm looking. Man, I'm going to hit this ball. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit it. Throw it, go ahead. Ah, oh, man. Oh, and two. No balls, two strikes to Lenny Harris. My foot messed up. Wait a minute, let me start again. Why don't you analyze his swing for us, Whoopi? All right, he's got the, oh my God, I've got a cramp in my butt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old word, That's the Latin the, word. The Latin word. <laughs> Futarum. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get it now. Where's Just he gonna go throw this ball? I'm thinking a low and away. No, and That's away where from Sasser everything he is. Wants it. And it was a check swing. Johnson, a tough play. No play. As Sosha goes to third. So the Dodgers have runners at first and third and one out here in the second inning. Tough play for Johnson. It looks like an extra from Witness. Yeah. <laughs> Coming in. It's that Amish baseball player. I don't think he gets the ball in his glove. He can't have any sewn buttons on that uniform. It's beyond Velcro, ladies and gentlemen. See, he has trouble getting it out. Dost Howard thou Johnson. want to get a hit? I think thou must. Howard Johnson. Johnson, Johnson usually plays a shallow third base, too, but he was back with two strikes to Harris, mm -hmm. and consequently, Lenny has an infield hit. But Howard Johnson is great because he invented the Ipswich clam. I don't know if you That's knew what that. I heard. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Know that. Prime in. <laughs> Alfredo Griffin now. With Alfredo. Runners at first and third and one out here in the scoreless second. Oh! All right. Don't make me throw this ball at you. <laughs> Alfredo Griffin. 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 Griffin.
Now, ooh, oh. remember last year, don't you, Robin? I do. Last year, your second major league game, you got the first foul ball hit in the booth. That's a wonderful thing. Right off my head. <laughs> yeah. Close. It was close. Do you I'll mean never I, forget. I man. missed this party last year. You did. I'm yeah. shocked. My son Zach has that. He treasures that ball. That's you still have it. You yes, still sir. Have it. Good oh, for you. Yes, sir. Oh, and one to Griffin. Oh! Foul away. Oh, and two. I have a ball from 1957 that uh, Gus Friendos threw up on, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom had a ball in 55. That's when the team was... <laughs> Whoa. She did. She was at a Yankee game. <laughs> now, Tim, you do the game standing up. Is that because you squatted for, for 18 years? Oh, Here it is. The last year's in. foul ball. Oh, oh America. Oh, <laughs> what the country, America. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took my head to the side like, oh, hey. Oh. <laughs> there goes the runner. The yeah, don't throw it. Don't throw it. And he didn't. That's the second Dodger oh. stolen base. The fifth strikeout for oh. Gooden. Boy, see, he's so much better off when he doesn't throw the ball. Well, the Mets have had a problem with their catchers. They've committed nine errors. Sasser four, Lions four, and Orlando Mercado had one. And some of that bulky clothing, though, seems to help, you know. <laughs> You're wearing that stuff, you look like a penguin in heat. You're going to have some problem getting that ball back out there. <laughs> now, how does that make the pitcher feel? I mean, the doc's got to be a little upset. That, well, well, of course, the Met pitchers, being power pitchers, really haven't helped the catchers a lot. They've had to hurry throws as Mike oh. Morgan fouls it back 0-1. So are you saying that the, the, there's a runner steal on the catch oh. or the pitcher? Oh. Oh. Man took a tumble. Most of the time, uh, runners will steal on the pitcher. <laughs> They'll get a good jump, and the Met pitchers, being the power pitchers that they are, have the high leg kick, and that uh, allows the runner to get a better jump. It always helps to have a high kick. I Thank say. you. Harvey Firestein here at the game with us, ladies and gentlemen. Some Harvey? fabulous uniforms. Right. What do you think about the uniform? I think they're looking tighter and better every year. Now, who looks good in the uniform to you? I think everyone. <laughs> I think it's, you know, shorts would be a very good idea, but let's not talk about a night like this. Chicago yeah. White Sox used to have shorts as uniforms. Right, it was a good look, too. <laughs> Especially on a hot day. 0-2 oh, to Morgan. Five strikeouts so far for good. There's another one. Like that's six. The crowd goes wild here at oh. Shea. Still no score after one and a half. Six strikeouts for Gooden. And we'll be back after this from Manufacturers Hanover. The ballpark, and this is one right here. Billy Crystal is coming out to take back. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Not too bad. Looks look like that one. Short look that's that. the one. Look at this. Track power. Look at that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hey, you're in the wrong business. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have to see that again. <laughs> We might run that back for you. The gotta, slider to McReynolds, strike one. I got to see that again. That was pretty nice. Oh, I hit him. This one oh. is tight. And oh, no. McReynolds Ow. now is complaining to home plate umpire Bill Hahn. And here it, comes Davy James. Hurt. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? It hurt me. He hit that. He threw the ball at me. It hit I'm me. I'm going to hit somebody. He threw Look the ball at me. Look at that so point. You better go to your Hello. room. Go to your room. Good. Don't make me come after you. First Nippy Jones, and now Cleon Jones, shoe polish on the ball, and now it is elbow skin on the ball. That was in the 1969 series. The man knows his baseball. And early in the 57 say. World Series. Right. Nippy Jones. Right. Nippy in. Jones, that's right. Here's my swing. Now, Whoopi, look at this. I'm up there. Look at that. Look. Oh. Ooh. There yes. it is. Ooh. It's gorgeous. Ooh. Ooh. That was for Ooh. the car, Bill. The Bill Long got Beach the car flash. that time. <laughs> Long Beach, New York flash. It's Woo. like it was nothing. You like it? Hey, hey, I do this all the time. Woo. That was gorgeous. Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg, and Billy Crystal joining us in the booth. And a slider to Mike Marshall, strike one. 0 1 to Mike. Mike's a great guy. We knew him when he was in Los Angeles. Terrific, terrific player. I understand he pulled an elbow muscle up when they, when they called him to tell me he was traded. It's, it's a joke that he used to have hurt a lot. Yes, yeah, I understand. Hurt a lot. Ralph, did you hear that? I heard that. I Stay understand it, too. I okay. understand. <laughs> Played only 100, 106 games last year. What Billy batting 0 for 3 on that one. That's a good one. What I, what I don't understand is how you hit it out of the ballpark. Well, I flexed and so did the editor. <laughs> <laughs> I pumped up. That's so funny. 
might think about it. I mean, Gooden came close to Willie Randolph in the first inning. So hey, maybe man. that was Marshall's oh. idea of throwing close to McReynolds that ended up hitting him. It's one and one to Marshall. Yeah, now, but Willie's a little guy, you know, on that team. Do you Now do you throw it a bigger guy or there, do you pick a little guy? Well, the, do you throw it Jeffries? The vagaries of the game. You really don't know whether uh, whether he was nope. throwing it McReynolds. The vagaries of the game? My Lord, that's well, protesting. Oh, my. Think not of this thing. Oh, simple bat and ball. Oh, time is thus. Oh, Imin Diamond and Green. But, yea, oh. the vagaries of the game. <laughs> Was that not a foul? Grab not that was. dust bag and flay. <laughs> it is time we must gun a play. It is Lasada with a, with a side of beef. <laughs> oh, ace. mitts, oh, gentle mitts, oh, thing of leather. As, come to my hand. As his slim fast dies in the... What, look, at, look at that there. Oh. Karnowski doing the lumbata there on the bench. There he is right there. <laughs> what the... Now, what is that Belcher holding? <laughs> right. Uh-oh. He's got them oven mitts. Look at him. <laughs> oh, doing the call right there. It's I'm like a lobster. Like, <laughs> what do we dub what he's Marshall. saying? Can we go back over there? We'll, maybe let's dub what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. What's the? Uh, so, this, so this guy says to me, "Are you eating that?" <laughs> I said, "What are you nuts? I ate everything." Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Slider oh. gets Marshall. Second oh. strikeout for Morgan. One out. Yeah, 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 I love it. I love it. Yeah. Is that chicken done? <laughs> Tommy looks great, though. He lost, uh, he lost Lots a player. He lost a player. Yes, he did. He lost a belly to be named later. <laughs> <laughs> did that Winfield thing go through? Hey, I don't know. Here's Ralph Boston. Now, this is the guy you like. This is the one. Daryl Boston. Daryl Boston. Daryl Boston, Darryl Boston. Darryl Boston Chicago, him? Manhattan. But for Florida. days. <laughs> but for days. Well, look. That's her new nickname. But for days. Outside, outside, a ball and no strikes mm -hmm. to Daryl Boston, mm -hmm. who formerly was with the White Sox in Chicago. Yeah. I see, now he's here. Thank you, God. He's looking up here for you. <laughs> I'm right here, Dale. Where's Whoopi? This is for her. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hit this ball out for Whoopi. I know she's watching. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not now. <laughs> tell, us, yeah. tell us about the show tomorrow night. 8 o'clock. Live HBO, about four and a half, maybe five hours of the five best comedians in the world, live from Radio City Music Hall. All the proceeds go to uh, shelters across the country We're to gonna help. We're going to have uh, Dan Quayle and the Juggling Congress. You're just, <laughs> it's a fabulous act. It goes to shelters uh, throughout the country. Oh, and there goes McReynolds. The fastball is inside, and McReynolds has a stolen base. Stole that base. Yes. Tried to hit my man. He's he not too quick, and he stole the base. At 21, two years ago. It's deceptively quick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just film. And the money goes to shelters throughout the country to help the homeless, and we provide medical aid. Comic Relief uh, provides medical aid to uh, these unfortunate people, most of them children right now on the streets of, uh, of America. So it's a, we have a great time. It's going to be a great show. And uh, so I hope everybody watches uh, live on HBO tomorrow. The Lee slider Vonda. is high, three and zero. Oh, be your third year with comic relief. Fourth, fourth, fourth. fourth. Unbelievable. Fourth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a shame we have to do this show, but as long as we do, we're going to have the best time we can. And again, because we have to get back to rehearsal to thank the Mets for doing comic relief yes. night. And later, you're going to see about, what are we, about thirty-five thousand, forty thousand. Oh, yeah, we got close to forty tonight. Oh, it's Basketball not outside. So it's a great sight. And we did the world's biggest joke tonight. Yeah, talk about that. Well, we just wonderful. We were just fooling around before, and I said, why don't we get to break it down to sections and, and get them to say it, and they did it. 30,000 people is. telling a joke. All right. That was before the game tonight. Look at this guy. <laughs> like the hair wasn't enough. He needed the nose. That's our low third cameraman. <laughs> it's an English cameraman. No, I love it. Thank Hello. you. I love this game. It's like cricket, but lasts longer, right? Look at him. So the steroids right. were a good idea. Right. <laughs> He's actually wearing a live raccoon on his head, ladies and gentlemen. A live raccoon on his head. Mackie Sasser now. One out, two on here in the second. Oh! Outside, ball one. Ralph, you okay? I'm all right. Okay, just check. <laughs> yeah. Ralph and I communicating, like, with our minds. Telepathy. We're the quiet ones. Ron Paranowski now wants to talk to Mike Morgan and Mike Sosia. You're entering the world of the soul arm. Next step, the showers. Do, 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 do. The picture man. The plate looks two inches wide. You can't get the ball over. Next stop, Albuquerque. Triple A. 
Hey, mister, can I get a hamburger? Too late, son. You didn't throw that one. They eat steak in the big show, <laughs> but not in Albuquerque. Mackie Sasser. This guy had a chew in his mouth that looked like somebody else had already <laughs> chewed it, and then they put it in their mouth. But that's the hardest thing about being a pro, is, is that chew. There's a base hit, drive, right base field. hit, right field. Nice. Come Come on. Gonna Reynolds score. is going to score. Out. Brooks will throw to third. Oh, they got him cut up. Off. Holy cow, he didn't see him. Eddie Murray should have been at first base. He sure should have. That's the only place he should have been. At 2 million <laughs> four, he should have been over there, Tim. I'm telling you. Really no reason for him not to be there. one nothing New York. And it kept him on the base. Assassin made a wide turn. Watch. Good throw by, by Yubi to the cutoff, man. Watch it, Ralph, you all right? You got it. Okay. Now watch the throw. He's right there. Alfredo, look, and he wants to make the throw, and then he's not there. Here's Sasser. Whoa. Oh, oh, he does the fucking chicken. <laughs> Funky chicken. <laughs> oh, man. Hold up her in the booth. Let's roll that one backwards. <laughs> yep. It's How to put it. That dancing chicken. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what third. type of chicken that was, but he was moving really well. Indeed. First and third and the slider to good. No First and one third. to Doc. That's right. The, the, the I got carried good. away, Tim. I had a moment. I was actually an announcer. I had a blazer and everything. Boy, there's a lot of funk out there, isn't there? <laughs> I tell you, that funky chicken. That funky chicken doesn't get any better than that. Boy, it is the play of the week. Boy, what a funky night, too. Here's Doc. Make a house call, babe. Yeah. Oh. Outside, one and one. Throw it so far. Well, with most, with most, most teams, most. Out here, most. Well, Something's it's happening loose lip <laughs> night here, Jay. I think we have a gas leak in the booth. Everyone, get out. There's some funk in most. You know, most it's people don't know what funk is. Ralph, you okay? It's Castilian baseball announcing. You know, most players don't Either know. Either they're safe or it's safe. not safe. You know, there are several strikes here to the team. But most people think that. If that if that win night here at the ballpark, partner, bail me out. Wait. I'm not touching any of this stuff. Especially the chicken one. <laughs> <laughs> Big old bucket of funky chicken, ladies and gentlemen. Every person watches that. With most ball clubs, you'd have to be aware of the squeeze, but not with the Mets. Davey Johnson doesn't like to squeeze. Oh, we all like a squeeze. <laughs> Especially after a good funky chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh! oh. Ground ball to oh. short. Yo. Can he do it? Randolph. Yes. Over to third. Oh. oh, my God. And Boston oh. scores. Oh. Two up in New York. See? He it's tried to be cute. Night. He tried to be cute and hip. And it bounced right out of his glove. Someone thought they were at Wimbledon. Cute. That's cute. You were in the wrong place. Popped See? it right out of there. There it is. Here it comes. A good hard slide by Mackie Sasser. Way to go, Mr. Sasser. Slow hit ball. Watch right here. He's right on Randolph. Somewhere. Oh, I now was watch. wrong. Here he is. Now watch. See? He's oh. not He's not yeah. on top of it. And he tried to be cute. Slap it Pretty away. Cute. Couldn't hold the ball. Mackie Sasser has incredible new shampoo products out. The only shampoo with char yeah. in it, ladies and gentlemen. Willie didn't get, he didn't get the ball up high enough. Gives you that lovely chewed My hair. stockings are killing me. God, where are these garters Now, why is Tommy's legs oh. crossed like that? <laughs> oh, Round ball right. a second, that should do it. Got it. All right, yeah. All Randolph All right. to it. Murray. We want to thank Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg. Thank you, yeah. Tim. And Robin Williams. We'll Y'all are night. terrific, and we will see you tomorrow night. Well, thank, thank, the you so thank, much. Much. thank you, Mets. Thank you, Mets. Whoopi, you terrific. Good luck with the funky chicken stuff. Well, just go to your participating Nissan dealer and enter the Nissan stolen base game. No purchase is necessary. You must be 18 years old and a licensed driver to play. And Kevin McReynold just stole the base, so David Unger is now in the drawing for a new Nissan 300ZX. He entered the Nissan stolen base game at his participating Nissan dealer, so why don't you do the same? Whoever thought you could win a new car by encouraging stealing? Simon Lasorda has encouraged Juan Samuel to steal. He has 13. The Dodgers trail two to nothing. Grounder up the middle, and it's under the glove of Kevin Elster. So Samuel, a dangerous leadoff batter to have on there. Well, we'd like to thank Robin Williams, Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg. Brilliant talent right there, my friend. Can you imagine going at that pace for nine innings? I'll tell you, that's something, isn't it? Oof. Comic Relief Night tomorrow night at Radio City Music Hall. Oh, boy. Wow. Here's Willie Randolph.
He singled in the first inning. The Mets scoring two runs on only one hit in the bottom of the second. Lead two to nothing. Samuel, as we said, with 13 stolen bases. Close. Very close. Samuel has been thrown out five times so far this year and here he's leaning you can see him making that little move towards second and that made it awfully close at first and there he goes fastball is outside Sasser can't find the handle so Samuel steals his 14th of the year and he's at second base with no one out There's no doubt about the fact that Sam Hall has all the talent that you need to be an outstanding ball player. He has that great speed, and right here he picks up the stolen base. And Sasser can't find the handle the last time Sasser threw the ball in the center field, so some might say that's a plus. And there he goes to third. Fastball's a strike. The throw is high. So that's his second stolen base. And stolen base number 15 for Randolph so the Dodgers four for four in stolen bases and we're only in the third well this one definitely was off of Doc Gooden he got the big jump and there was just no chance for Sasser here count a ball and a strike to Willie Randolph two nothing Mets but Samuel at third and nobody out here in the third inning curve and a beauty a ball and two strikes to Randolph close again and Randolph is going to go to first and now here comes Davey Johnson a similar play with Kevin McReynolds opened up the bottom of the second Davey says that ball hit the bat it sounded like it hit the bat but you can never tell because you can have your arm broken and get that crack too so Randolph a tough night tonight he had a Pitch sale behind his head his first time up and now hit by a pitch ball this time. Let's take a look at the pitch. It was high and tight, a fastball. And it got him on the wrist. You could tell that. Sure looked like it hit him. So Doc Gooden, who on a 1 2 count had gone behind Randolph in his first at bat, now on a 1 2 count, hits Randolph in the wrist. So the Dodgers with speed on the bases. Randolph at first, Samuel at third, nobody out. Cal Daniels the batter. Strikeout victim in the first inning. Gooden has struck out all six of the outs recorded so far. There is a storm brewing, and I'm not talking about the weather, but there have been a lot of tight pitches so far. And we'll see how the Dodgers handle it in their half of the third. Ball two. The first time you excuse it, the second time you think with Gooden's control it might be more than a mistake. Unless you elect to ignore it, and the umpires certainly are not doing that. Randolph back. Randolph with a stolen bases, first time on base. You know, it's interesting. We saw Tommy Lasorda and Rick Dempsey. The catcher talking to Phil Regan, the go-ahead scout of the Dodgers, before the game. And with the way that everybody's been running against the Mets this season, I mean, it's certainly no secret, but I wonder if Regan and 
Tommy were talking about that, or Phil Reagan, I should say. Line to left, base hit. Sam Well scores. Randolph stops at second. It's now the Mets two and the Dodgers one. As Daniels singles to left. That's the fifth Dodger hit. First baseman. Andy Daniels, Murray. an opposite field hitter, has tremendous power to the opposite field, as a matter of fact. McReynolds playing a deep left field as he should be against the left-hand batter. And he takes the ball and the bounce as the Dodgers get one back. The Mets score two in the bottom half of the second. Samuel scores. Eddie Murray now the batter. He struck out in the first inning. Oh, and one to Murray. hit Daniels will try to go to third and make it as Randolph scores it's now a two to two ball game as Murray trickles one through on the right side and drives in his 16th run of the year well this is not hit hard but it certainly hit in the right place ball getting by Marshall and also by Jeffries and not hit hard enough for Strawberry to stop the runner at second. So now runners at first and third, still no one out. Murray picking up his 16th RBI with that base hit. And one of the best clutch hitters in the National League is going to be the batter, and that's Hubie Brooks, as Mel Stottlemyre is out to talk to Gooden, Sasser, and Jeffries. Gooden's last outing, he gave up six earned runs in right six and two-thirds innings, losing to the Houston Astros last Saturday. He has won only one. He has lost three on the year. The good news is Doc is healthy for Mets fans. The bad news, he's been ineffective as the fastball to Hubie Brooks is inside. He'll be bringing a seven game hitting streak into this game nine hits in his last 28 at bats. He's having a strong year for the Dodgers. Six home runs 19 RBIs. Jam Jeffries will make the play. And there's one away. What if he drops that ball. Had a double play there's a chance. Yeah got to have, have the presence of mind to do it. You certainly get Murray at second. Brooks doesn't run that fast. And if Daniels tries to score, you nail him easily with nobody out. Just something to think about. It's one of those types of balls that wouldn't have bounded away from you. Of course, Jeffrey's just getting accustomed to second base. And I'm not saying, obviously, that that's a play that you normally That'd do. That'd be a very, very tough play to pull off. Especially when it was not a not hit that high in the air. As Sosha takes ball one. Sosha a double with one out in the second. 2-2 two -two game, first and third, one out. There goes Murray. Curveball off the glove of Marshall. Elster throws him safe at first base. Daniel scores. It's now three to two Dodgers. And we'll see how that's going to be scored. It's got to be a base hit. Dutch Renner at the first base umpire. The hit and run on with Sosha the batter on the curveball. It is being scored as a base hit, a run batted in for Sosha, his second hit of this game. The Dodgers with runners at first and second. We'll look at it again. It's sharply hit. Runner going with a pitch. Marshall gets out there and makes a good try for it, but it's out 
out of his glove and then it rolls over to Jeffries who gets it to Marshall as he goes back to the bag. And the umpire at first base, Dutch Renner, said, safe. Still only one out and Lenny Harris now the batter. He had an infield hit, a stolen base in the second and the curve is a strike. 0 and 1 to Lenny Harris. It might be comic relief night, Mr. K, but there's nothing funny about what's developing here. We've had two hit batsmen, Mac Reynolds and Randolph, and several other pitches that were very close. We'll see if the Dodgers elect to retaliate at the bottom of the third. Here's that play at first base again. Jeffrey's picking the ball up, throwing to Marshall. And going down the line and getting the call, Mike Sosha. So an infield hit for, for Marshall or for Sosha. That's the seventh Dodger hit. It's three to two Los Angeles. Sasser arguing, I think, that that's the fourth argument Davey Johnson's been in in this game, well in the third inning. They're saying that Bill Hahn Call timeout too late. That Gooden already had his leg up in the air, ready to deliver the ball. Speaking of legs, it looks like Eddie Murray has a pull. What's going on here? Well, this is a cold night. It's a zany night so far, too. You know what's happening right now? Full moon night. That gets your attention? Not necessarily, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of something. <laughs> think of anything. Right? Yeah, this is. Uh, it is certainly a full moon, and this game is being played like there's a full moon. One and one to Harris. Two on, one out. Three to two Dodgers. We're in the third. Strike two. Still one and two to Harris, who came to the Dodgers with Cal Daniels in the Tim Leary trade. A spinoff of that trade, Mariano Duncan is leading the National League in hitting with a 400 average. As Mr. Everything for the Red Hot Reds. He's leading a non base percentage, slugging percentage. Hmm. Curve misses two and two. with two in the bottom of the second the Dodgers have retaliated with three here in their half of the third it's three to two Los Angeles first meeting of the year between these two teams that's the seventh strikeout for Doc Gooden This is a weird game. So Harris is down on strikes. And Alfredo Griffin is the batter. He struck out in the second. Gooden has given up seven hits. And he has seven strikeouts. There have been four stolen bases. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Mike Morgan on deck. I'll tell you, hitting Willie Randolph really set this inning up. 
three, three and oh. I'm sure that he did not want to hit him because he was not in a position to do that. That put the time run on base. He may not wanted to wanted to have hit him, but following that first at bat when he threw the ball behind him, there had to be something there. Then throwing the fastball tight enough to hit him. I mean, three and one. I know what you're saying. I mean, he didn't. He certainly didn't want to hit him. He wanted to knock him down, but that's one of the byproducts of throwing inside. You may hit somebody. <laughs> Anthony with 98 foul balls to his credit. <laughs> He's got his own banner now. Three and one to Griffin. Three balls, two strikes. So Murray at second and Socia at first base will be off. didn't he the guy behind him got it we understand the guy behind him didn't even have a net <laughs> Tony was playing out of position there. <laughs> playing too shallow huh? <laughs> now they're going to talk about it There go the runners. Fastball. Drill down the left field line. Foul. I'll tell you, when you talk about hitting batters, the Dodgers certainly have a very vivid recollection of Doc Gooden and the batter, Alfredo Griffin, who was nailed by Doc on the 21st of May, 1988, breaking the second metacarpal in the right hand of Alfredo Griffin and he missed 57 games as a result. Gooden nine and one lifetime against L.A. Curve lifted in foul territory. Johnson makes the catch so things could have been worse for the Mets but the Dodgers scoring three runs on four hits and they strand a couple. It's three to a zany ball game. The Dodgers taking the lead in the third inning with three in their half, and Kevin Elster leads it off. Here in the bottom of the third, Kevin walked in the first inning. And inside, ball one. One and oh to Elster with Howard Johnson on deck. And it hit him. Or did it? You could feel that coming. I'm surprised that Bill Hahn, the home plate umpire, hasn't issued a warning. I mean, if this isn't intentional, thinking that Goodens was intentional to Randolph. And the Dodgers, I might add, had every reason to believe that it was. Well, to give you an idea, Morgan came into this game having walked only three batters in his five game starts. So he is a control type pitcher. Three and oh. And that's on the corner. Three balls, one strike. So maybe the Mets got the message, or that's what Mike is thinking. The Mets got the message, and now no more throwing at anybody. And he hopes that Doc Gooden got the message. That's the way I read this situation. Might be wrong, but that's the way I read it. Inside, Elster walks. That's the third walk issued by Mike Morgan. And all you have to do is check the look on Tommy Lasorda's face to find out <laughs> and read some lips. On a 1-2 pitch, Gooden threw behind Willie Randolph in the first inning. And on a 1-2 pitch, he hit Willie Randolph in the third. 
Outside corner, 0-1 to Howard Johnson. I'll tell you, in the American League, a fight would have already started. Mm -hmm. In the American League, you throw a pitch on the inside corner, they think you're throwing at them. Fly ball, center field. Samuel catches it, the first out of the inning. On the Nissan National League scoreboard, Philadelphia four, San Francisco nothing, bottom half of the third. Pittsburgh continuing on, they're four up on Houston, bottom of the fifth. Chicago five, Cincinnati one, top of the fourth. Atlanta in St. Louis in the bottom of the first, no score. Montreal playing later in San Diego. Strawberry now. Darrell, a line drive that was not hit hard to Alfredo Griffin and short his first time up at short. He's 0 for 1 and 5 for his last 37. American League hitters like Dave Winfield, Reggie Jackson, Jose Canseco have it in effect pushed the ball out over the plate. They have complained for so long. Reggie did it. Winfield has done it. Canseco has done it. They complained so long about the pitch inside that pitchers are afraid to throw inside. They're afraid they'll get a warning. Two balls and no strikes to Strawberry. Well, Winfield used to charge them out every yeah. any time they came yep. in there. Reggie Jackson the same way and there are a lot of hitters that have that have followed suit in the American League slider fouled away two balls and a strike to strawberry you just don't you simply don't see many fastballs inside in the other league I think that's one of the major differences in pitching in this league in the National League in the American League pitchers pitch inside more in the National League than the junior circuit. Two and one to Strawberry. Boy, he's really messed up at the plate. And what about that swing on a 2-1 count? Two and two to Daryl. Tell you, sometimes you're up at the plate and you're just lost, and Daryl appears to be lost right here. Right here, he takes a one handed type swing, fooled by the pitch, and just weakly fouls it out away. Two and two to Strawberry, three to two, Dodgers here in the third. One of the things that's happening to Darrell right now in this slump that he's in is the fact he's been missing good pitches that he should be hitting. In offensive situations. And that was an example of it. 2-0, and oh, he fouled it weakly to the right side. 2-1, and one, he fouls it weakly the other way. You're not compelled to swing when you're ahead of the hitter. I know it sounds simple. If that, if, in other words, if that were an 0-2 swing, you'd understand it, 1-2, and two, because you, it's a defensive swing. But when you take defensive swings in offensive situations, you're doing something wrong. It's 3-2 and two to Strawberry. And you're doing something wrong in your mind. That's where it's happening. There goes Elster. Breaking ball hit deep down the right field line. And that shows you the strength of Strawberry. He can do everything wrong and still jack one out of the park. Still three and two. Well, this is a breaking ball that hangs inside. Darrell just a shade out in front of it. And with the one-handed swing, he hits that ball far enough. But it's foul. 
That top hand is coming off the bat not by design. It's coming off because he's full totally and he has to let go to get the bat extended. Three and two to Strawberry. We're in the third inning, and a lot has happened up to this point. There goes Elster. Fastball fouled away. So Kevin will go back to first. Davey Johnson giving signs to Buddy Harrelson. Often the best time to pick up the sign is on your way back to first. A lot of third base coaches like for runners to look at them after a ball's fouled away because that's the, the time that the other team can least pick them up as Elster runs and Strawberry walks. That's the fourth walk issued by Mike Morgan. You're watching Mets Baseball 90 on WWOR TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. As Kevin McReynolds comes up, and he was hit by a pitch, stole second, and scored on Mackie Sasser's single in the second inning. Ground ball left side off the glove of Harris Griffin made a fine play to come up with it that holds Elster to third and we'll see if it were was another Dodger error they made 10 in three games up in Montreal being swept by the Expos it is being scored as a base hit this ball really should have been fielded good play by Griffin as he backs up Harris, the third baseman, who did not come up with it. Now the Mets have the bases loaded with one out. Mac Reynolds at first base. Strawberry at second. Elster at third. Tommy Lasorda talking to Ron Paranowski, his pitching coach. And Mike Marshall, the batter, and he lifts one to left field, but foul. 0-1 to Marshall. The longtime Dodger hitting with a, an ideal chance to hurt his ex team as Daryl Boston is on deck. Way outside, good play by Socia, one and one. Base is loaded, one away. Mets trailing by one. Slider grounded to third. Harris going to second. A hard slide by McReynolds. So Marshall has an RBI, his 13th of the year. Elster scores. It's now 3-3. Three to three. Right here, McReynolds keeps the Dodgers from making the double play. Marshall is not fast. The throw by Harris is a good throw, and Randolph just can't get the throw away. So the takeout slide at second base giving the Mets a tying run. And it brings up Darrell Boston. I tell you, McReynolds is one of the tougher sliders in the National League, as Darrell Boston is the batter with runners at first and third. Outside corner, strike one. If you remember the 1984 National League Championship Series, Kevin McReynolds sliding into second base broke his right wrist and missed the World Series when the Padres played Detroit. His only World Series opportunity. One and one to Boston. Left 
field. Strawberry scores. And here comes Marshall, and it's because, I believe, of fan interference, it's going to be a ground rule double. So a big hit by Darrell Boston. You know, if in the opinion of the umpire, Marshall could have scored, then you could award Marshall home plate. And the Mets would have another run. It's As it stands, it's 4-3 to three, New York. Right here, it's right in fair territory, just fair by about a foot. And as the ball goes into the stands, it's picked up by a fan. And it is doubtful if Marshall could have scored if that ball stayed in play. Uh, you don't know. I mean, Daniels doesn't have a strong arm, and that ball could rattle around in the left field. You don't know about the carom, really. Well, the carom would determine yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess if you're the third base umpire, Greg Bonet, you don't know what kind of carom it's going to take. But certainly it could have cost the Met the Mets a run. As Gooden will be the batter with the bases loaded and two outs. Ladies and gentlemen, this reminder is a violation of National League regulations to interfere. What if it's a guy like Jeffries on base? Obvious, obvious, yeah. I mean, obviously, you have to consider the speed of the runner mm -hmm. coming from first to depend and to determine whether he's going to score or not. And Marshall, certainly one of the slower Mets, would have had on a routine carom a tough time scoring. Bases loaded, two outs, four to three New York for Boston. That was RBI number four and a big hit. Sasser was walked intentionally. Strike one to Gooden. Gooden had an RBI in the second inning. Grounding him to a force play at second base as Boston scored. Slider and a beauty. No balls, two strikes to Dwight Gooden. Side. One and two to Gooden. Should Gooden get on, Greg Jeffries would be the batter. Still no activity in the Dodger bullpen. Only in the third inning, it's the Mets four and the Dodgers three. There might be a good reason for that. In the last six games, the Dodger bullpen has had an earned run average of 7.11. Two, two and two to good. The Dodgers are missing Jeff Hamilton, their starting third baseman. The biggest blow, of course, Oral Hershiser will be out for at least the rest of this season. Slider hit deep to center, over and back to Southwell, and he can't get to it. Marshall scores. Boston scores. Here comes Sasser. Doc Gooden with a triple to clear the bases. Seven to three, New York. to the bullpen at seven at seven to three New York all earned runs right here it's a slider and Gooden gets on it Samuel misplays it to some degree and Gooden ends up with a triple and three RBIs he has a career high of four runs batted in in this game Jeffries now ball one I'll be talking about that for a week. Slider for 
for a strike, one and one. Ball and two strikes to Jeffries. The Mets with five runs here in the third inning. Lead seven to three. You get the feeling there's going to be more scoring, though, don't you? <laughs> Inside corner gets Jeffries, but the Mets explode for five runs as they bat around in the third inning. Five runs on only three hits. <laughs> Strange game, and here's Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> don't blame me for it. No, no. The full moon. No, no. But good and really helping his own cause. Rather unusual game for the doctor. He has had great stuff, but he's given up three runs and seven hits. He has struck out seven batters in the first three innings. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Batting for the pitcher, Mike Morgan. Now we're going to have a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Mike Morgan. Mets leading by a score of seven to three. Traxler is the pinch hitter, a newcomer with the Dodgers. Pitch is in there for a called strike. Traxler, Brian Traxler, the batter at Albuquerque. He was hitting 313 before being brought up. And that pitch is in for a called strike, too. Traxler has played only three years of professional baseball. Started playing in 1988. Lives in Waukegan, Illinois, where he was born. Here's the Dodgers 16th round selection in the June 1988 draft. And it's swinging a miss. So Gooden gets his eighth strikeout. One man out in the top of the fourth. Take a look at the Nissan American League scoreboard. Toronto over Detroit. Well, at least Cecil Fielder hadn't hit a home run. He has 13 to lead the majors. 5-0 Milwaukee over Minnesota in the fourth. 2-0 Kansas City over Chicago in the fourth. 2-zip Cleveland over Texas. Baltimore at Oakland. New York at Seattle. Boston at California a little later on. And with one away, the batter will be Juan Samuel. Samuel with a base hit and two at bats, and that's strike one. I wonder if Dave Winfield will make it in time for that Boston California game tonight. And a good breaking ball. Samuel takes a look at strike two. You always wonder when those players to be named later are going to be named. Good curveball right there to Samuel. You got to go out of the strike zone now to try to get him out. And they go up high with a fastball. Did he swing? No, he did not, according to Dutch Runner. Thing with Samuel is you get ahead of him. My scorecard just blew there go away. all the ad libs now. What do you mean ad libs? There goes everything. There goes my life. There comes a balloon back up. <laughs> I told you it was comic relief night. I I'm looking see. below us. I, I, now what do you do? My scorecard. What am I going to do? Wing this baby? You're going to have to ad lib the whole thing now. Well, I can do that, but you're going to have to cover <laughs> for me. i got to tell you right? who's coming up. Huh? <laughs> the How one, two that? pitch. And it's hit down the right field side. Strawberry, a long run, and it drops in fair territory. Samuel's going to go to second. The throw by Strawberry, not in time, and Samuel loops a double to right field. Well, Strawberry 
unable to get to this one as it's blooped out there drops between Strawberry and Jeffries Samuel the fastball was inside he was jammed on the pitch but it was out of the strike zone well it's comic relief night <laughs> it's the first time I've ever worked without a scorecard where is it it's, down it's there? somewhere in there <laughs> I wonder if anybody with the with the Sony would possibly <laughs> get up. <laughs> there goes Sam Well in the pitch. Swung on and fouled back as Gooden works to Willie Randolph. Samwell attempting to steal third has to go back to second. Samwell stole second and third in the third inning. Now trying to steal third again. Samwell with 15 stolen bases. He now leads the National League. I hope if Sammy comes across my scorecard, he'll pick it up. <laughs> if anybody has Tim McCarver's scorecard, please come to the press level immediately. I usually put things on it, try to keep it down. There goes Samuel again, the throw in the dirt, dug out by Johnson, and Samuel has his third stolen base and his second stolen base of third. That's the fifth stolen base for the Dodgers tonight as Samuel takes the curveball or Randolph takes the curveball high. And that's really where the game of baseball has changed. And we talked about it many times. 20 years ago, if you're trailing by four, you wouldn't even think of stealing third base. Samuel does it easily. So he's on third with one out. Mets are playing their infield back at short and second and first. And a swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Well, I have a scorecard, but it's blank. There isn't anything on it. <laughs> How nice of Steve Olbaum to give me my He's scorecard. All yeah. Now it's up to you to fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> the one-two pitch. And Randolph fouls it back into the stands. Mackie Sasser doing the catching tonight. And it's like catching, doing a game without a scorecard for an announcer is like catching without knowing what's coming. That would be tough. Again, the one two pitch, and a fastball is swung on and missed. And he really had something on that one. This is the fastest goodness thrown in a long time. His ninth strikeout, we're in the fourth inning. I mean, he's on a record-breaking pace. He could borrow his, I guess. Our understanding producer, Jeff Mitchell, yeah, showing all the scorecards in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so now two men away, and Cal Daniels will be the batter. Cal drove in a run his last time up after striking out his first. Gooden struck out the side in the first inning. Racked up a strikeout of the side in the second inning. Had six strikeouts for all the outs in the first two innings. And a fastball foul back. When the Dodgers got their three runs in the third inning, he had just one strikeout. And now in this inning, he struck out two. If you lose, if you lose my scorecard, we're out of business. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I thought I'd take yours away and, and saw how you liked it. One ball and one strike. <laughs> and at 1-1, one, one, breaking ball in there, strike two. It's like going on a camping trip and not having a map. Yeah, or matches. Everybody else has got theirs. <laughs> that might be mine on the top of the screen right there. And the fastball fouled away. Hours of preparation down the tubes, pal. Two strikes. The Mets 
leading by a score of seven to three. Got him. So Gooden gets his tenth strikeout through four innings, leaving a runner at third base, and he got him with that high hard one. Again, he has struck out the side. He has done that in three of the four innings, and the score at the end of three and a half innings, it meant seven. Mike Morgan going three innings and working three innings and giving up seven earned runs. And that was Mike Maddox's record with Albuquerque. Just recalled, you'll remember Maddox from Philadelphia Phillies days. He was released by the Phillies, picked up by the Dodgers, had a good start at Albuquerque, and here he is pitching once again in the big leagues. Mike Maddox. And the brother Greg Maddox and the first pitch as he starts off here in the bottom half of the fourth inning strike one. Kevin Elster the batter has walked the two times he has been up. He also has scored a run. And a fastball high. One ball, one strike. Maddox was brought up when Anthony Munoz was sent down by the Dodgers. Boy, they are really high on that Munoz. Don Drysdale telling me how hard he could throw before the game. One and two. Curveball bouncing away and it's two and two. That's a pitch I don't remember him having that tightly wrapped curve. He used to throw sinker slider. And the one thing the Dodgers have done well over the years is to get a guy like Mike Morgan, for instance. Get a major league pitcher with with a good arm, changes delivery. Little blooper into center field coming hard to center fielder. And the catch is made. Remember, folks, it makes good sense to drink responsibly. Know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. Sam Wall making the catch, and that brings up Howard Johnson. has struck out and flied to center field in his two appearances tonight. Mets leading seven to three. Dodgers about hit the Mets eight to four. The Mets with a big five run third inning highlighted by Dwight Gooden's bases clearing triple. There's one to left field and it will drop in front of Daniels and Howard Johnson has his first hit. So Johnson on and Daryl Strawberry the batter. Daryl is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run score. Johnson on at first base and the first pitch to Strawberry. A fastball outside ball one. to first base Johnson back I found it you found it well I didn't find <laughs> it unbelievable my scorecard was found and this pitch gets away so Johnson moves on down to second Jonathan Paisner went downstairs I don't know if I can read it but at least it was found and he found my scorecard that blew out in the fourth inning. How about this? Well, I wish you folks could see how. <laughs> I mean, everybody stepped everybody on it. The thing's that. dirty and everything. But thanks to Jonathan Paisner, I found my scorecard. Boy, that's an ugly scorecard <laughs> right there. It was so pretty before it flew away. <laughs> play on at second base. Johnson back. Fairly close play. The second base umpire making the call. Terry Tata. As Kevin McReynolds stands in the on deck circle.
Two balls, no strikes to count to Strawberry. And the off-speed pitch swung on a miss, two and one. Dodgers on this road trip have won one and lost five. They've lost their last four in a row. The Mets on this homestand are five and three, trying to make it six and three, with two more left to play Saturday and Sunday afternoons. The two and one pitch to Strawberry grounded foul, two and two. Saturday it'll be Frank Viola in the mound with his perfect record going. Six and all oh, on earn run average 1.05, the league leading the ERA. John Wetland will be pitching for the Dodgers. He's one and two. And then on Sunday, Sid Fernandez closes out the longest homestand of the year here at Shea. He'll be opposed by Tim Belcher. Two and two, the count. Time is called. Strawberry asking for time and getting it from Bill Hahn. I'll tell you, to show you how lopsided the Mets starters have been this year, Frank Viola, six and oh. And Doc Gooden, David Cohn, Sid Fernandez, and Ron Darling are four and eleven combined. So Viola has won two more than the other four starters. If you put Ojeda in there, it's four and twelve. And the two-two pitch, the fastball for ball three. And that was the pitching staff that everyone said was the best staff in the National League. Just having a tough time getting on track. Can't get going. Three and two the count to Strawberry. And it's grounded foul. Mets will fly to San Francisco, then down to San Diego, and then back up again to LA. This is an unusual homestand because usually when the coast teams come to town all three of them come. But Cincinnati Houston and two of the three coast teams San Diego will be here when the Mets come off of the. Ground ball to the shortstop Griffin he goes over to first base and picks up the out there. As Johnson moves over to third. See, you saw him look toward third. And with one out. Griffin decided it just wasn't worth the chance. Watch the glance at Johnson. And he knows how many outs there are, of course. And the throw to first picks up the second out. If nobody were out, that same situation happened. He'd go to third base to try to get Johnson. But with one out, it's not worth the chance. Get the sure man, and they did. And that brings up Kevin McReynolds. He takes a breaking ball. It's ball one. Kevin has been hit by a pitch ball. He also has had an infield base hit. And this one bounces away, and Johnson will score on the wild pitch. So the Mets tack on another. We talked about that different breaking ball by Maddox that we were not used to seeing. That's that tightly wrapped curveball. And the spin on that is very difficult for a catcher to it's very difficult for a catcher with that type of spin to keep the ball in front of him. And for that reason it's squirted away from Sosha. And the fastball back a strike. Mets led two nothing then the Dodgers led three to two the Mets got it back with five and there's a line drive base hit. So McReynolds with his second hit. He's been hot. First baseman Mike Marshall. That'll bring up Mike Marshall. Marshall facing his old teammates for the first time. He has struck out and grounded into a force play. Fastball for ball one. When Marshall grounded out on the force play, it looked like it was going to be a double play ball and the Dodgers would be out of the inning. But McReynolds made a great slide in the second to keep Randolph from making the double play. 
Ground ball hit to the shortstop. Griffin goes over to Randolph for the force play that will end the inning. But the Mets get one run on one hit. The run scoring on the wild pitch. No one left on base to score at the end of four. The Mets eight and the Dodgers three down by five. And the first pitch to Eddie Murray hit hard to the second baseman. Jeffries the throw to first base for the out. So not good in giving up a ground out. And that is the first one he has given up in this game. He has struck out 10. He's on a record breaking pace at this point in the game. Right fielder. All time strikeout record 20 strikeouts by Roger Clemens. So and, in that, and in that game he walked no one. I think that's the most remarkable thing about that game. 20 strikeouts and no walks. Or that's one of the remarkable things. Not the most, but one, certainly one of them. That was against the Seattle ball club. And now the batter's Hubie Brooks who has struck out once and popped up. Gooden with the strike. Now strike two. Tim McCarver caught the first 19 strikeout game ever pitched. And the pitcher lost it. Steve Carlton, September, late September 1969. Big curveball. Goodbye, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> Our Mr. Brooks, right? Yeah. That's what Doc says <laughs> as Hubie. And we mentioned how well he hit Doc. 17 for 37 lifetime coming in is 0 for 3 tonight. And now with two men out, the batter will be Mike Socia, who has hit the ball the ball hit the ball both times he's been up. He doubled to right center and then had an infield base hit in the third off the glove of Mike Marshall. And the fastball of strike call. By the way, Gooden strike out high, 16. He's done it three different times, most recently. In 1985, he did it twice in 84, once in 85. That's his career high. And a curveball hit the right center field. There comes Strawberry, and he makes a nice catch. So Strawberry making the catch to retire the side. And that is the first time in this game that the Dodgers have gone down in order. The score at the end of four and a half innings, the Mets eight, the Dodgers three, and here's a word from Nissan. Who could that man be? As one of the groundskeepers. Daryl Boston comes in and here's Tim McCarver. Daryl Boston with the key hit in that five run third inning. With two outs, he doubled down the line, a grounds rule double. And that forced the Dodgers to walk Mackie Sasser. And then Doc Gooden with a bases loaded triple. Darrell has scored two runs and driven in a run. A good night for Darrell Boston. It's 0 and 2. Curve, grounded foul, still 0 and 2. Inside, ball one. A ball and two strikes to Darrell Boston. Eight to three, Mets on top. Inside, ball two, two and two. Change popped up. Lenny Harris, the third baseman make the play one out here in the fifth this copyrighted telecast is authorized under television rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience any publication reproduction or use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and Sterling Doubleday Enterprises LP and WWOR TV is prohibited any commercial or other use of the program such as by charging admission for its showing similarly prohibited and Mackie Sasser on the first pitch flies to center. 
two outs as Samuel makes the play. So an eight to three game. Doc Gooden is going to be the hitter. And we'll see if Mike Maddox has any retribution from Gooden throwing close twice to Willie Randolph, once hitting him earlier in the game. Grounded sharply up the middle and bobbled by Griffin. It'll probably be scored an error on Alfredo Griffin as Gooden spanks one up the middle. Here's a replay on it. If it scored an error, it's his eighth error already. Wow. That's an awful lot of errors for only 30 games played. So Gooden at first base. Greg Jeffries the batter. See the 11th error. We mentioned the 10 errors for the Dodgers up in Montreal. The Expos routing the Dodgers in a three-game series, outscoring them 22 to 6 in that three-game series. And the Dodgers made 10 errors in those three games. Really had problems with their defense. High to Jeffries, ball one. Greg, 0 for 3. Ground ball towards second. Easy play for Randolph. And he gets Jeffries. The Mets fail to score, but lead 8 to 3 after 5. And we'll be back after this from Mita Copiers. Got her glasses and nose handy. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Chilly night here at Shea. But the Mets lead 8-3 to three as Lenny Harris ropes one into right field to lead off the sixth inning. So Harris now two for three. That is the ninth Dodger hit. They lead the Mets in hits 9-6, to six, but unusually trail 8-3. to three. Alfredo Griffin now will be the batter. Griffin 0 for 2 on the ninth. Wanted to bunt, it gets by Sasser. Harris, a big, big turn at second base, and he'll go back. We'll see how it's scored. It's a ball and no strikes. Alfredo Griffin. Well, right here, Griffin moves out to bunt. It's off of Sasser's glove and probably be scored as a pass ball and is. So it's a pass ball against Mackie Sasser. So Harris at second base. Ball and no strikes to Alfredo Griffin. We're in the sixth inning, eight to three, New York on top of Los Angeles. Fly ball to center field. Boston over. And he makes the play as Harris stops at second. So one out, and we're going to have a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Mike Maddox. It's going to be Chris Quinn. His brother's a pretty good hitter. Chris Quinn. Tony Quinn, of course. National League batting champion last year, the year before. Chris Quinn. Pinch hitting for Mike Maddox. He's four for 11 as a pinch hitter with three runs batted in, so he's done a good job. It must be hard for a young man like Chris Gwynn living in the shadow of his brother who is so awesomely talented with San Diego. Low, ball one. I know... Uh, Mike Hartley warming up to the Dodgers. That uh, Tony Gwynn has always said, I got a younger brother in school. This is before he got into pro ball. He said, that's going to be a better player than I am. So he's had, really had a booster there. But I guess the difficult part, Tim, is they say, you got to hit as well as your brother. Everybody comparing you with 
your brother's swing. Kurt Gibson still on the DL. All sorts of problems with his hamstring and knee. It's three balls and no strikes to Chris Brit Brit Chris Gwynn. There's a strike. Three and one to Chris. Gooden has struck out 11. Three and two to Gwen. On deck batter Juan Samuel. Lenny Harris at second base. One out, eight to three Mets. We're in the sixth. First game of a three-game series, and we will carry the other two. 1.30 tomorrow, 1.30 on Sunday. Strikeout number 12 for the doctor. Two outs. Sid Fernandez struck out 16 batters last year for the most strikeouts in the major leagues by a pitcher. And that is number 12 for Doc Gooden here, and he's working in the sixth inning. Samwell, a strikeout victim in the first, and he singled and doubled. He's two for three in the curve for a strike. Sammy traded for Mike Marshall and Alejandro Pena. High ball one. Very candid. Did not like New York City. Couldn't adjust to the city. Traded from Philadelphia. He liked the trade initially. And then did not like the city for his family. A new little baby girl. Foul back one and two. So everyone thought that Samwell would fare well in Los Angeles. He's off to a rocky start, but has the confidence of Tommy Lasorda. He put some awesome numbers on the board his first four years. Drove in 100 runs as just two years ago. Ball and two strikes to Samwell. Curb fouled off. He stays alive. Still one and two. Hmm. Samwell finished second to Doc Gooden for the Rookie of the Year honors in 1984. Of course, Gooden. Was stole. Just yes, Sammy stole 72 bases that year. That at the time was the rookie stolen base record until Coleman came along the next year. Two and two. He had broken the record of 71 that was set by Tim Raines and then Coleman with 110 in 1985. Curve fouled away. I think Samuel had 76 that year. Yeah, Reigns had uh, his during the strike year in 81. I got him for 72. Well, we'll give a check here. 72 was right. Right the first time, okay. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. and two to Juan Samuel. Still two and two. He also struck out and set a rookie record for strikeouts 168 times. And 37 times in his first 108 at bats this year. Alarming. 
He struck out 120 times last year, his fewest of any big league season. Down on strikes. Strikeout number 13, a baker's dozen for Doc. He, he leads 8-3. to three. Never got to the major leagues until the end of the season in 1989 when he was brought up from Albuquerque where he had a record of 7-4. and four. He had a record with the Dodgers last year of 0-1 and in and five ball games. So far this year, he's 0-0. Earn run average of 4.66. He's walked four, struck out 12, giving up nine hits and nine and two-thirds innings. Mike Morgan started this game. He went three innings and gave up seven earned runs. He was relieved by Mike Maddox. Mike Maddox worked two innings and gave up one run. Let's see how this game developed up to this time. It's really been a zany affair. The Mets scoring two runs against the Dodgers, an RBI by Sasser and Gooden on a ground out. And then in the top of the third, the Dodgers came back, RBI singles by Cal Daniels, Eddie Murray, and Mike Sosha. So the Dodgers leading three to two after two and a half. Then at the bottom of the third, the Mets highlighted by a triple by Doc Gooden and also singles by Marshall, a double by Boston, scored five times. And then they added on another run in the bottom of the fourth when Howard Johnson scored on a wild pitch. That's where we are, 8-3 to three New York, and Kevin Elster leads it off here in the fourth inning, or the sixth inning, I beg your pardon. Kevin 0 for 1, he has walked twice and scored a run. Inside, ball one. Ball two. Doc should be very happy talking to Darren Reed. He has 13 strikeouts, even though he's given up nine hits. Inside to Elster. Talking about his hitting, isn't he? But I'm sure he is. Four RBIs for Doc. Strike one, three and one to Kevin Elster. On deck batter, Howard Johnson. Outside corner, three and two to Kevin. Mickey Hatcher sitting next to Kirk Gibson. Gibson's dramatic home run against Dennis Eckersley in the 1988 World Series. Something to remember as this one is lifted to center and Samwell makes the play. One away here in the sixth, Howard Johnson coming up. Howard Johnson. That was with Mike Davis on deck, a game in which Jose Canseco had his only hit of the series, a grand slam home run, his second time up. The Dodgers won the game 5-4. to four. Kirk Gibson hit that slider off Eckersley on one leg. Strike one, 0-1. Oh Somebody wrote that he accomplished something they haven't been able to do since they first came to Los Angeles in 1958. Keep the Dodger fans in their seats till the end of the ballgame. <laughs> Tinseltown, they do have a tendency to arrive late and leave early. That was an interesting graphic. The Only the four home runs that Johnson has off of L.A. pitching. Last year, he hit his first home run at Dodger Stadium and got his first extra base hit at Dodger Stadium. So Hojo has really had a tough time against the Dodgers since coming to the Mets in 1985. Ball one, one and two. You're watching Mets Baseball 90 on WWOR-TV, Secaucus, New Jersey. 
Hope you've enjoyed our telecast tonight. Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams. Comic Relief Night tomorrow night at Radio City here in New York. Five hours of laughter. <laughs> Can't take that. A ball and two strikes to Howard Johnson. Got him with the split finger. First strikeout for Hartley. Darryl Strawberry coming up. Tommy Lasorda. I mean, think about the Dodgers. You talk about management intact. This is his 13th year with the Dodgers as their manager. So for the last 36 years, the Dodgers have had two managers. Walter Austin, then Tommy Lasorda. Similar to the Yankees. 0-1 <laughs> to Strawberry. Yankees go through that many managers in a month. <laughs> Think about the 36 years, two managers. I think the most amazing thing, Tim, is the fact that Walter Austin worked on a one-year contract every one of those years he was with the Dodgers. Never had a multi-year contract. 23 one-year contracts. He was a successor to Charlie Dressen, I believe, in 54. Dressen asked for a two-year contract or possibly even more, and they wouldn't give it to him, so he was gone. Tommy Lasorda did get a multiple-year contract. Popped up in shallow center. Randolph back. And he makes the play. Hartley comes in. The Mets go in order here in the sixth inning, but lead eight to three after six. And we'll be back after this from Delta Airlines. To lead it off. Mets leading by five runs in this ballgame, but the big story at this moment is 13 strikeouts for Doc Gooden through the first six innings. Randolph, one of his strikeout victims, has a single and was hit by a pitch and then struck out the first pitch, ball one. We understand on the Winfield trade that Winfield has rejected going to the California Angels. And a strike call, one and one. And the Yankees are saying that he agreed that he would go to the California Angels when he signed his contract back in 1980. Originally. That, was, that was one of seven clubs agreed to by Winfield. The player to be named later, by the way, in a trade that was announced this evening, Mike Witt, the pitcher, right-handed pitcher for the Angels, a strange deal now we understand the reason that Winfield can bar a trade is the five and ten rule ten years in the major leagues and five consecutive years with the big league club and Randolph works out a walk check the Nissan National League scoreboard and we'll tell you more about the Winfield deal ten to six those Phillies make it ten to five in the sixth Phillies over San Francisco. Four to nothing. The Red Hot Pirates over Houston in the ninth. Five to four. The Cubs over Cincinnati in the eighth inning. Four to two. St. Louis over Atlanta in the fifth. And Montreal over San Diego. So all of the National League East clubs are winning as we speak. And the batter for the Dodgers is Cal Daniels. Cal with a single. Sandwiched in between two strikeouts. And the fastball foul back out of play. If a player has 10 years experience in the major leagues, five with the same club, five consecutive years, he cannot agree to a trade, but the arbitrator will have to decide that if Winfield said initially that he would agree to a trade to California, is that still in effect? I would certainly think it would be. It would be if the contract is extended and ten year was. Ten year contract. There's a ten year contract that Winfield signed initially. Well, that would supersede, I guess, the I would overall think so. rule. Yeah, it's part of the original contract. Mm -hmm. So he would have to go, I would think. In the meantime, 
neither the Angels or the Yankees can suit out Witt or Winfield. So they're handicapped by having to play with 24 players instead of 25. And that strikeout of Daniels is number 14 for Doc Gooden in this game. So he is still First baseman, Eddie Murray. a strikeout behind breaking the record on the percentage of strikeouts throughout this ball game. The record of 20 strikeouts. His high 16 in his major league career. His next batter will be Eddie Murray, who has struck out once and singled in three at bats. And the first pitch a called strike. The activity in the Mets bullpen, too. Doc's thrown an awful lot of pitches. Talking about superseding, you wonder if the see Musselman and Jeff Musselman or Alejandro Pena warming up. Gooden's thrown a ton of pitches tonight. He has given up three runs on nine hits while striking out 14. He has hit one batter and he has walked one. And they count one and one on Eddie Murray. First six outs of this game were strikeouts by Gooden as far as the Dodgers were concerned in their at bat. One and two. Murray hitting 300 with five home runs, 16 runs batted in. There's a durability record right there. 59 games in 14 years. And a drive to left field right at McReynolds. And he puts it away. So the out in the air diminishing Gooden's chances. Of course, it doesn't appear that he's going to go after a Mets record. Or any other record as they have that bullpen going right now. Gooden's career more important than any single record. As Hubie Brooks steps in, Hubie has struck out twice. He also has shattered his bat and popped a second. And he fouls off a fastball. That's leading eight to three. In the first of three with the Dodgers. Good and last loss to the Dodgers back on May 25th, 1985. Has a nine and one lifetime record against them. And the breaking ball fouled off in the count strike two. And there's no way he'd be the losing pitcher tonight. The Mets may lose the game, but Gooden, if Gooden gets in trouble here, they'll make a move to pain your muscle. So a two strike count to Hubie Brooks. He'll be bringing a seven game hitting streak into this game. He's 0 for 3. The runner goes and the pitch is a fastball outside. And it's ball one. The Mets playing behind the runner at first, so Randolph takes off for second base. Marshall playing deep behind him. And that could be a stolen base and could not be, depending on the official court score. That's not making a play on it. Swing and a miss, and Doc Gooden gets his 15th strikeout with six outs to go. Gets him with a fastball, and on the GE line score, it's the Mets eight and the Dodgers three. And the Mets and Paul Mitchell are joining in the celebration. All women 15 and older attending the game against the Dodgers will receive a special Paul Mitchell Mother's Day gift pack with assorted products courtesy of Paul Mitchell. Game time 135 will be on the air at 130 by the way in case you can't make it out. Tickets are available at all Ticketron outlets, Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window or you can call 
TIXX for more information. <laughs> well, we're going out of the bottom of the seventh, and Tim McCarver all dressed up in his comic relief outfit. Oh, yeah, man. You got to do it. <laughs> that young lady was not now. I was trying to read that promo, and I forgot I had the wrong glasses on. <laughs> so Doc Gooden putting the jacket on. He has 15 strikeouts, six outs left in this ball game. If he could strike out all six, he would have an all-time record of 21 strikeouts in the ball game. The record is 20 held by Roger Clemens. And for the Mets, it's Kevin McReynolds to lead it off. And Ralph, the bullpen is quiet right now, so it looks like Gooden will be going out there in the eighth inning. Two balls, no strikes to McReynolds. On the mound is Mike Hartley. Third pitcher used by Tom Lasorda. Mike Morgan on the losing side of the ball game. The starter came in with a record of four and one. Hartley with a fastball, a call, strike two and one. Mets. No, that might be all for Doc right there. That looked like an exit sign there right goes. there. Yep. So he's not going to give it a shot. It was a long, long shot. He threw. I bet he threw 140 pitches tonight. With all those strikeouts he had to. 15 strikeouts gave up a total of nine base hits. But he leaves the ball game leading eight to three. The three-one pitch. And a strike call. Could have a pitcher come in and strike out five or six. If you strike out six, that'll be the most strikeouts in a in a nine-inning ball game, but by two pitchers. Mm -hmm. Three-two pitch. And that one swung on and missed. And hardly gets his second strikeout. He's working his second inning. We don't have access to the record book. But I wonder what the nine-inning strikeout record combined? would be for a combined. Uh, I'm for, sure for it's more not than, more than 20. No, it's not more than 20. I wouldn't even think it would be 19. I wouldn't either. Here is Mike Marshall batting against his former teammates, and he takes the first pitch of strike. Marshall 0 for 3. Strike two. Pirates won their ball game over Houston four to three today. So the Mets, if they win this ball game, remain five games back of the Pirates, who have won their 20th ball game. And there's strike three. So Hartley picking up his third strike out and pitching to five batters. <laughs> That brings up Daryl Boston. Boston has walked and scored. He has doubled the drive in a run. And he has popped up the third. Jeff Musselman throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. Ball one. Last year the Dodgers beat the Mets. Actually it was the other way around five times and the Mets won seven so the Mets uh, beat the Dodgers seven out of the 12 ball games they played. Two balls no strikes to Darrell Boston and the fastball missed it's two and one. Tim Tuffle looks like he's frozen in stone there. It is cold, but not that cold. Timmy, hello. Come out of it. <laughs> Looked like a still frame, didn't it? <laughs> Does. Hey, all right. That's 99. All right. Anthony. Anthony Mariello. All right. We see you, pal. One mas. Uno mas. Comic relief night. His 99th foul ball here. All right. He's going for the record.
Three and two the count. So a full count to Darrell Boston. Mike Hartley on the mound and the pitch to Boston is fouled back out of play. Once again, the 3 2 pitch with two men away. And it's ball four. So Boston walks for the second time. And it brings up Mackie Sasser. Mackie with a single his first time up to drive in the Mets' first run. He was walked intentionally his second time up. That set it up for Gooden to triple in three runs. And he was out on a fly ball to center field his last time up. And this ball hit in the corner in right field. It'll be extra bases. Boston off and running. And is he flying? They're going to wave him in. He'll score without a play. And Sasser ends up with a double and an RBI. Our first chance to see Daryl Boston go around the bases. Tell you, the more you see of this guy, the more impressed you are. I mean, you're right, he was moving. And he scores without a play. First double of the year for Mackie Sasser. So Boston scoring, and the Mets now leading by a score of 9 to 3, and that will bring up a pinch hitter. For Doc Gooden and that gets some booze. It'll be Dave Magadan. Fans here with the hope of seeing Gooden go after the strikeout record. So Gooden is out of the ball game, working seven innings, striking out 15 batters in the seven innings. And he's well on his way to his second win of the year. He's lost three. And Magadan swings through a fastball. Magadan hitting 293 with no home runs, three runs better than. Pitch back to Magadan in the dirt. Good play on it by Sosha. Sasser holding at second base. Magadan hitting 293, 12 hits and 41 at bats. He has only one extra base hit, and that's a double. Magadan two for eight as a pinch hitter. One pitch foul tipped one and two. We may be, may be seeing Mickey Hatcher tomorrow as Frank Viola goes against John Wetland. Sid Fernandez against Tim Belcher on Sunday. Two good pitching matchups. And the one two pitch strike three call so Magadan called out on strikes to end the inning the Mets get one run on one hit they leave one in scoring position the score at the end of seven the Mets nine and the Dodgers three now here's a word from the New York Daily News 85 Dodgers Stadium top of the 14th Mets four, the Dodgers four. And Mookie Wilson off of Carlos Diaz hits a solo home run to left field. The Mets win it by a score of five to four. As Carlos is the losing pitcher. And remember, nobody beats the Wiz. Carlos Diaz going to the going to the Dodgers in the 
Sid Fernandez trade along with Bob Baylor as Dave Maganin enters the game and Jeff Musselman is the pitcher. This is the 11th appearance for Musselman. He leads the Mets in that department. So it's Rick Dempsey as the pinch hitter for Mike Socia. The Mets bringing the left-hander in. So Dempsey, a right-hand batter, into the ball game. Dempsey doing something this year not many people have done. One of them, though, that has done it. Tim McCarver playing in four different decades in the major leagues. Dempsey hitting 429 so far this year. Yeah, Rick was up with the Minnesota Twins in 1968 and 69. He's had a fine career. Two strikes to count to Dempsey, and he takes a fastball. One ball, two strikes. Another ball call, so it's two balls and two strikes. Dempsey has been up just seven times. He's had three hits this year. Mets leading by a score of nine to three, although the Dodgers about hit the Mets nine to seven. Third ball gets him. Out in the bullpen, Don Ossie, who pitched for the Mets last year. And we're going to have another pinch hitter. That is strikeout number 16 by the Mets pitchers in this game. Sharperson will be the pinch hitter. Batting for Lenny Harris, number 27, Mike Sharperson. Sharperson batting for the third baseman, Lenny Harris, who was two for three in the game. And the first pitch ball one. And a strike call. It's one ball and one strike. Sharperson hitting 293. He has no home runs. Three runs batted in. Batting 293 with 12 base hits. Two of them doubles. And he hits another one hard. It goes into left field for a base hit. Boston over to cut it off. Good job there. And. Sharperson holds it first. Tenth base hit for the Dodgers. It brings up Alfredo Griffin, who is 0 for 3. And there's another base hit. So Griffin moving Sharperson over to third base as he singles the right field. And we will be looking at another pinch hitter. Ladies and gentlemen, for the pitcher, Mike Hartley, number nine. Mickey Hatcher, Mickey Hatcher will be the pinch hitter. Hatcher hitting 211 for the year, four hits and 19 at bats. He has one run batted in. Mets Lady 9 to 3. And Musselman's pitch is taken for ball one. in playing behind the runner at first base. One ball, one strike in the call. Well, the Mets come to do the plate in the eighth inning. Looking at Don Austin. And another base hit. So Hatcher singles to left, going to third, and oh. out on a bad base running play oh. is 
Alfredo Griffin oh, as the Dodgers are trailing by a score of nine to four and he gets thrown out at third base. They're only running against one of the best left fielders with the best throwing arms in the National League. This is just a terrible base running mistake on the part of Alfredo Griffin. Mac Reynolds with the bare handed throw and he nails it. Got to play a passive game when you're trailing by five in the eighth inning. So the third hit in the inning turned into an out. And that brings up Juan Samuel, who's had two hits and four bats. Samuel also has struck out twice. And this one chopped to third. Johnson over to Magadan. And that'll do it. Dodgers get one run on three hits. They leave one. And the score at the end of seven and a half inning, innings. It's the Mets nine, the Dodgers four. Now here's a word from Mobile Gatling. Here's he was a pinch hitter for the pitcher. And also a new catcher in the game. That'll be Rick Dempsey, who also was a pinch hitter. And Don Assey on the mound. Don with a record of one and one. He also has one save. An earned run average at three. Walked seven, struck out 11. And he'll be working here to Greg Jeffries. Mike Sharperson is playing second base. He too a pinch hitter and he stays in. First pitch to Jeffries hit down the left field side. Hatcher over there and he makes a good play. So Jeffries 0 for 5 today as he fouls out. The veteran utility ball player Mickey Hatcher and he makes a nice running catch on this one as he checks out the area there and picks it up. That'll bring up Kevin Elster. Elster 0 for 2 with two walks. And a fastball high for ball one. The pitcher of record, in case you just tuned in, Doc Gooden working seven innings, striking out 15. As the Mets now lead by a score of 9 to 4. Pitcher record on the losing side. Mike Morgan, who came in with a record of four and one, now four and two. And the fastball a strike. Ossie with the Mets last year, one and five. And he had two saves. In fact, he had a save at his very first appearance last year, opening day. Yeah, and we talked about it earlier on August 20th, giving up that home run to Willie Randolph. Three run home run to Willie Randolph that turned the ball game to the Dodgers and turned the Mets season right around. That was the start of their downfall. Two and two. On the curveball. And they count three balls and two strikes to Elster. The big home runs over the last few years in most recent Mets history. Remember September the 11th, 1987. This ball popped up in foul territory. Eddie Murray, the first baseman, will challenge it. Two men away. That was when Roger McDowell served up that two-run homer to Terry Pendleton of the Cardinals. After every game this season, points will be awarded to Mets pitchers for the AT&T Long Distance Award. Here's how it works. For every inning pitch, you get a point. We also add in fractions of a pitcher's credit with a complete game. He gets a bonus point. At the end of the season, the man on top will win the AT&T Long Distance Award. Well, Doc Gooden now on top. Viola goes tomorrow. And the fastball high to Howard Johnson. Then you had the Randolph home run last year, and then Mike Sosha's home run in the 88 playoffs. So 87, 8, and 9, it seems like it was a home run to remember against the Mets. Indelibly. Yeah. Fastball foul back one on one. Alejandro Pena, the former Dodger, throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. Johnson one for four tonight. A single to left field. And the curveball for a ball. Two and one. I 
Ross. He signed as a free agent prior to spring training. And this one pulled foul out of play, two and two. On deck for the Mets, Daryl Strawberry. Mets leading 2 0 in the game. The Dodgers then got the lead 3 to 2. Mets with five runs in the bottom half of the third, then regained it and stayed there. The strikeout ends the inning, a 1 2 3 inning for Don Ossie. And the score at the end of eight innings of play here at Shea. The Mets 9, the Dodgers 4. Pena. Alejandro with one save. 1 0. He was with the Dodgers a long time, nine years in the organization. Alejandro Pena. And we said earlier, coming to the Mets from the Dodgers. He won the ERA championship for the Dodgers back in 1984, as a matter of fact. He beat out Dwight Good. Signed with the Dodgers in 79. And up with them in 1981. Ladies and gentlemen, for the pitcher, Don Pitched in four Andre league championship series and two Jose World Gonzalez. Series for the Dodgers. Mickey Hatcher explaining it. On the bench of the Dodgers as they bat here in the top of the ninth inning. It'll be Jose Gonzalez to lead it off. Pena's first pitch is a fastball for ball one. Gonzalez is a pinch hitter. He's hitting 236 for the year with four hits and 14 at bats. He's driven in two. And this one is popped up and playable. Howard Johnson being called off the play by Kevin Elster and the catch is made. One away. That'll bring up Cal Daniels. Tomorrow afternoon, game time of 1.35. We'll be carrying that game right here on WWR TV. It'll be Frank Viola in the mound for the Mets, 6-0. League leading home run average of 1.05. Of course, he leads the National League in victories with six. And the Dodgers will be countering with John Wetland with a record of one and two. Sunday, Sid Fernandez goes, game time of 1.35. Sid, two and three, a former Dodger against Tim Belcher, who also is two and three. And the first pitch to Cal Daniels swung on and missed. Daniels one for four with three strikeouts. Singled in the first run for the Dodgers back in the third. Dodgers about hit the Mets 12 to 7. Mets with no home runs in the game. But a big five run third inning. The key blow of bases clearing. Three base hit by Doc Gooden. So Gooden really the star of the game. 15 strikeouts and seven innings, three RBIs, and that at bat, and another run batted in, and another at bat. Daniels hitting 313, four home runs, 13 runs batted in, and it's a 1 2 count. Cincinnati winning seven to five over the Chicago Cubs. They're now 20 and six. And with the Dodgers losing here tonight, and if they do lose, they drop another game back of the Cincinnati Reds. This ball fouled on the left side. Dodgers would then be eight games back. And their record would be 14 and 16. Only one club in the National League West has a winning record. All the others are under 500. And this ball, a base hit to right. So Cal Daniels gets his second hit of the game. And it will bring up Eddie Murray. Murray won for four. Murray with a 
single to right field to drive in a run in the third. And that tied up the game for the Dodgers. Murray hitting 297, five home runs, and he takes the first pitch for ball one. First year in the National League. Last year with the Dodgers, batted 247 with 20 home runs. And he fouls away a fastball. One ball, one strike. Three hundred and fifty-eight home runs for Eddie Murray in his major league career. Tip that one. The cab one ball and two strikes. Pena cannot get a save in this game. With the Mets leading by five runs. Runner at first base not being held on by Magadan. And that makes it two and two. This ball hit hard to Strawberry. He's right there. Two men away. So the Dodgers down to their last out as Daniels moves back to first. And that'll bring up Yubi Brooks. Right here, Yubi 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. And that's where the combined total of 16 strikeouts of the Dodgers. Gooden with 15 strikeouts in seven innings before leaving the game. And that's ball one. Club record for the Mets, 19 strikeouts by Tom Seaver. He did that against San Diego in 1970. Tom that year struck out those 19 batters, the last 10 were strikeout victims. One and one again. The 10 consecutive strikeouts, a major league record. Looking at an old pitcher right there, as a matter of fact, he holds the International League's record for most wins career, 129. That's a lot of that's a lot of years in the International League. Tommy Lasorda. Two and one. Three and one. It used to be that triple A baseball was just a notch below the major leagues. It's not the case anymore because triple A ball is more of a an instructional ground, a teaching ground, a fertile ground for future major leaguers. It used to be that guys were coming down from the big leagues playing triple-A ball. Not anymore. And this one pulled foul down the left field line out of play. The old Pacific Coast League at one time had an open classification and they had some special rules where you couldn't draft the players out of that league that were left there. They were opting to be a third major league. But then the, the Continental League was started that never did get off the ground but it did bring about expansion. 1961 and the ball foul back out of play the American League expanded in 1961 and the National League expanded in 1962 and of course that was the year the Mets were born so 
So the Mets are uh, out of way from winning this ball game, nine to four. The count three and two on Hubie Brooks. The runner goes, and the ball hit at the shortstop, Kevin Elster. He goes across the first for the out that ends the ball game. And the Mets win the first of three with the Dodgers here that will complete the homestand. The Mets on the homestand. Now with a record of six wins and three losses, the longest homestand of the year. Winning pitcher of the ball game, Doc Gooden. He now has a record of two and three. And the losing pitcher of the ball game was Mike Morgan, and his record stands at four and two. And we'll be back with a recap, recap right after this word from Tropicana. <laughs> 